What's Miles from Black Women TV? We're talking to Thomas Q. Jones, who has multiple roles currently on TV. We just saw him reprise his role back on P Valley season two, but he also can be seen on Bounce on his day job, which is a starring role on the show Johnson. How's it going? Everything is great, Wilson. Thank you for having me. Always good to talk to you. Yeah, so, you know, granted, you know, you never know when things are going to happen. But right now, you are in control of your own show. So that's currently on right now. So before we get into your role on P Valley, talk to me about Johnson coming back for season two. And from what we've seen so far from the episodes that has aired, let's go back to the beginning for those who are being introduced to your show. What is the show about and where do we come into season two? Yeah, so Johnson is a TV series that my producing partner created, Deji LeRae. Uh, it's about four black men living in Atlanta. All of us are best friends. We've been best friends since elementary school. We just so happen to have the same last name, Johnson. And the show is uh, it's told from the black male POV and just, you know, basically showing, you know, how black men maneuver through relationships, through brotherhood, through conflicts, uh, all of the things that any other show that showcases other people uh we just showcase you know black men and a black male pov on our show johnson uh it's on bounce tv it airs every sunday night 87 central and uh we're partners actually with cedric the entertainers company and eric Bones company of burden bear entertainment and mine and my producer partner deja the race company been night train productions mm -hmm. now when you guys were coming up with this concept <laughs> You know, we've seen and we currently see a number of shows highlighting women. There's usually four of them. And here is four guys. <laughs> so did you guys think about like, oh, let's do the opposite from a male perspective? Is that the concept of it? And just running with it? Yeah, we just felt like there wasn't a show that, that really showed Black men in our totality. I think sometimes Black men can be viewed as very one-dimensional on TV and in media. Uh, and we felt like there was an opportunity to actually show the black men that Deji and I know, which are black men that are ambitious, that are emotionally intelligent, that, um, you know, um, find ways around conflicts besides the typical uh, ways that you may see on some of the other programs on TV. Um, and it's smart. You know, we wanted to show ambitious black men and also different essences of black men. Uh, the four Johnson characters lead guys uh, we're all different complexions, different energies, uh, different life conflicts. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we gave uh, our audience an opportunity to see black men in a different perspective and show them as, as ambitious and positive. Now, there's like I said, there's four characters. Did you have a debate as to who you wanted to play? And talk to me about the role you're playing and how do you relate to him? Well, the four characters, we all have different life uh, experiences and different life conflicts. My character is Omar Johnson. Uh, I play a father who is having some marital woes. So we're kind of showing what that type of relationship looks like from a black male POV. If you're in a relationship with your wife or your significant other and, and you're trying to maneuver, maneuver through some, um, you know, um, conflicts that, that come about. And also what it potentially looks like, you know, in a, in a custody uh, battle. And so that's what Omar and his wife, Naomi, who's played by Khalila Joy, uh, that's kind of their conflict. That was their conflict in season one. In season two, you can catch them trying to, uh, you know, work around those issues and uh, make their relationship work, not only just to, to, you know, have both parents in the home for their son, but also they still love each other. So um, it's a great role for me. It gives me an opportunity to play something uh, a little different. A lot of times I've, I've been cast to play uh, the love interest, or maybe, uh, you know, more of a menacing guy. But this character has very, very, uh, he has a lot of levels to him. He's very complex. And uh, those are the type of characters I really, really like to play. And because, you know, do you guys, do you get to work with the writers in time to farm out this character as far as where they're taking him, where, they, where you want him to go? You know, how does that work? Obviously, as you're playing this role and, you know, you try to leave it up to the writers, but do you have a say as far as the character now that we're into season two? Most definitely. Uh, Deji LeRae, he's my producing partner. He's actually the creator of the show. He is the uh, major writer. He's written all 20 episodes. Uh, each season, there's 10 episodes, and he wrote the last season's 10 episodes and this season's 10 episodes. But we create the characters together. We create the character story arcs together together. Um, we're constantly 
um, in conversation about issues in the black community, um, differences between black men, black women, differences between just black men in general. Um, we're very, very specific with this show. We touch on uh, trending topics, but we also touch on controversial topics. So uh, I have a lot of um, um, influence in the writing as well as the character storyline. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big part of my own character arc on Johnson. And then how comforting is it knowing that Bounce has, you know, obviously you're now season two. Sometimes we, hey, you want that job stability. You know, one season, sometimes it's all about introducing the characters. But now right. that you're grounded into a season two, people can now watch. Because sometimes, you know, we try to invest in these shows and then we get upset when they're canceled after one season. You know, some right. shows don't survive. But when they get to a season two, that shows a lot of faith from the networks from, and from the audience. Right. Bounce is the perfect partner, Bounce TV and Scripps. They believe in Johnson from the first time that we took this project there. Um, David Hudson, who's the um, head of original programming at Bounce, the first meeting we had with him, he totally understood what this project was. He totally understood the impact that it could have, and he totally understood the necessity for it. Um, so be able to be able to be uh, partners with Bounce, uh, the first black broadcast network, um, also a network that allows us to be unapologetic in our content and in our voice as black men and our narratives as black men, uh, we couldn't have picked a better partner. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the marketing, obviously, you're, you're not always in control of that. But, you know, there's a lot of shows. There's a lot of black shows. There's a lot of networks. You know, so everybody's vying for attention. Not that they're in competition, but you want an audience, you know. Um, how do you what's the best way of describing the show? Is it the easiest to say or it's four guys? And what we're saying is relationships and drama through their perspective? Yeah, you could say that. It's, I mean, I would say it's, it's a dramedy. There's, we, we, it's a real show. It's an honest show. Um, the way that we get into some, some of the controversial conversations is through humor. It's a true dramedy. You're going to find yourself laughing and you're going to find yourself a little uncomfortable at times uh, with the content and the conversations. Um, but I would, if I had to describe the, the, the show in one word, it would be real. It's a very real show, especially for the black community. Um, a lot of these conversations that we're having and a lot of these characters are people that you know in your real life, people that you're related to, people that you're friends with, people that you've dated, people that you may be married to. Um, these guys and the women on the show are very, very real, very um, um, honest and that's the feedback that we've gotten in the past two seasons is that people watch this and it's like we were just talking about that last week or you know if you're a guy and you had that conversation with your girlfriend about some specific uh way that that men think you know she might not necessarily believe you when you say it but then she sees it on johnson and that's reinforcement for you to say hey you know remember i was telling you about that you know a couple of weeks ago so it's a very real and honest show and as an actor and as a producer on the show, how much have you learned in terms of your skill set as an actor and someone working behind the scenes? You know, as you go on per episode, there's a lot you're learning. And as you mentioned before, you know, this is totally different from the roles people see you in. They get to see you play a human being, you know, that's going through a lot of stuff that other people can relate with. And then, you know, they get to say, and then at the same time, you know, you're working behind the scenes. So you get to be part of like how things are being played out and you're working with a cast and crew. Right, right. It's been incredible. Uh, Deji, my producer partner and I, we both produced projects on our own. Um, and we met in 2017 and created our own production company, Midnight Train Productions. And so we, we produced a couple of projects before Johnson. So it was good because we had chemistry um we we see things very similar um we're very hard working and dedicated uh and we're, we're very passionate about our culture and and we're passionate about uh our truth as black people so being able to be behind the scenes uh we're also the showrunners and executive producers of the show so having all that responsibility is incredible because now we're responsible for everyone that's on that set whether you're a crew whether you're a talent um, even in post-production, editing, music, score, uh, that's all um, Deji and I, it's our responsibility. Um, but it's been great because you learn so much about yourself as a producer, 
uh, writing the scripts and understanding the character arcs and storylines, it makes you tap in that much more as an actor because you understand the motivation for these characters. And even if I'm not in the scene or Daisy's not in the scene, uh, we're behind the directors and we may have specific notes that the director may not necessarily think of because they didn't, they, they're, they're not in the trenches like Daisy and I are. So it gives us a better overall understanding of the show, our message, our narrative, um, and also, you know, two heads are better than one. You know, if there's something that I didn't think of, he thinks of it and vice versa. And then final, and then going on another note, we just saw you back on P Valley, uh, season two, you know, people were glad to see you back, you know, um, how did that come about? Did you know from season one that you would be coming back for season two and how your character will be played out? <laughs> I think P Valley in all aspects is very unpredictable. Uh, from the storylines to the cast, I think Katori Hall, Patrick M. Polk, I think they're geniuses, uh, brilliant creators. It's an incredible show. Um, I had a feeling that I would be back season two because there was some unfinished business with my character, Amain, and, and uh, Lil Murder's character and also Mercedes' character. But obviously, I, I didn't know in what capacity. And so when they reached out to me and said, hey, we want to bring you back for the last three episodes, um i was really uh really excited about the opportunity um and and also i love playing that character you know he's a very different character than the characters that i've usually been able to play and i pride myself on being a character with range you know i've, I've been i've trained for five years um you know I, I love taking on characters that challenge me that force me to have to learn a new language learn a new accent uh, do something different because it helps me grow and evolve as a person so yeah, P Valley is incredible. I love playing Maine on the show. It was it was it was really good to get a warm welcome from the fans. Um, and so yeah, well hopefully we'll we'll get a season three and see if Maine comes back. Now you were able to do Maine before Johnson came on board, but now that Johnson's back, and and hopefully maybe we'll get a we'll definitely the, the hope is that there's a season three. Right. How does that the, the affect your decision making as far as what you're going to do now? Because you're a showrunner, you're an executive producer, you're one of the stars of the show. Does that right. limit what you can do, especially if, if they're going to ask you to come back for P-Valley or other projects, whether it be a movie or a TV show? It's a great question. Um, and that's a good problem to have in Hollywood. <laughs> so, you know. If, if, to be if in demand. <laughs> yeah. If you can be in demand and you have to choose between one project or the other, that means that you're, you're making the right choices you have the right people on your team and that people are believing in you and your talent and they see your value. So um, obviously I'm obligated to Johnson and Bounce TV and Deji, my producing partner, and everyone that's at Scripps and Bounce TV. Um, you know, that show is groundbreaking for that network. We feel like it's groundbreaking for the culture. So that's a top priority. Um, but also, you know, I, I am, you know, an, an actor and an artist outside of my own projects. So P Valley is a priority as well. Um, I've already turned down several projects throughout just production with Johnson because um, another production didn't want to be second team to Johnson, which I understood. Um, but, um, you know, that's what I guess my team is for, you know, to help me figure out uh, scheduling and timing. And, um, you know, if someone wants my character back bad enough, then, you know, hopefully we can work out some, some, some dates and scheduling. You wanted a few athletes who've made, who has made a successful transition to the acting world and now the producing world. And it's not easy for everybody to like, as people mention your name and, you know, and they say, oh, that's the guy that played so-and-so. Oh, he's currently on this show. Oh, that's Maine. A good third now forgets that you played football for a number of years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like they forgot. It's like, you know, the, and we're about to get the football season coming back again. You know, is the still is the sport still with you? Do you sit home and watch games on a Sunday? Actually, I don't. I, yeah. I don't have time. I I, I don't. Uh, when I committed to becoming a full time actor in 2014, my goal was to make people forget that I played football. And it's very it's very risky because the odds of being able to truly transition in this business are very low. Um, or, um, you know. There's so many different reasons why some people don't continue. You know, they, you know, it could be a family situation. It could be anything. So, but I'm the type of person, once I commit to something and I, and I say that this is what I'm doing 
then I do whatever I need to do to try my best to make it happen. Uh, and that started with me reinventing myself, adding the Q, which is my middle name, Quinn, into my stage name, Thomas Q. Jones, because I felt like Thomas Jones just put me behind the eight ball coming into the business because now I'm Thomas Jones from the Bears or the Jets versus Thomas Q. Jones, who could be anybody. And so what I found was because I trained so hard for four or five years, every project that I worked on, people didn't realize I was the same Thomas Jones from the Jets and the Bears and the Cardinals and Chiefs until after they had already seen my performance. So they didn't get a chance to pre, uh, have preconceived notions of me as an actor. Because sometimes it's like if you saw Tom Brady starring in a new movie, you're automatically going to think that's Tom Brady from the Patriots. So psychologically, you might not give him a chance as an actor, even though he might be good. You still see him as Tom Brady, the seven-time Super Bowl champion. But if it was, you know, Tom Q. Brady, right? You may think it's somebody different. Mm -hmm. You think it's somebody different psychologically. And if he has a great performance, then you're like, wow, that was powerful. And then afterwards, somebody said, you know, that's Tom Brady from the Patriots. But like, no, it's mm -hmm. too late. You got him. You pulled him in already. And so, um, so I understood before I got into this industry that I needed to reinvent myself. And the only way I could do that was become a full-time actor, uh, an artist, and leave football completely behind. And a lot of people are afraid to do that because once you're known for something and you've been fortunate enough to be successful, um, it's risky because the next thing you'll be known for is being a bad actor. So people may forget you played football, but the reason why is because now you're a bad actor versus being a respected actor, which is what I was accomplished, trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, you know, when you're not on any of these programs promoting the shows and you're not doing anything from the entertainment perspective, perspective, what keeps you humble? You know, what do you do on a regular basis that you can be yourself without having to worry about being videotaped? You know, nowadays you have to be worried about social media. You, where can you be yourself? <laughs> I think I've been blessed and fortunate to grow up in a very humble environment. My mother and father were coal miners. My mother worked 19 years underground in the coal mines. And so um, who am I to not be humble? That's always been my mindset. Uh, I come from a very small place in Virginia where a lot of people don't really have these opportunities, not only just as an actor, but even to play in the NFL. And that's what keeps me humble is the fact that uh, my humility has gotten me here. The fact that I know I can always get better. There's always something for me to learn. Um, being grateful for any opportunity that I'm given because I know that there's someone else that didn't get the opportunity. Uh, my humility keeps me humble. I think that's what it is. Well, Thomas, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I've known you for a couple of years, but it's always good to see you grow and to see you have other projects and that they're totally different from the others. So like for those who do not watch Johnson and they watch you from P Valley and vice versa, you know, they're seeing two different ranges in you and hopefully we'll get to see you in other projects, you know, uh, when time permits. But in the meantime, you got a good thing going and all you can do is keep it happen, keep it going and make it happen. And we'll see you in other projects down the road. But for now, we can support you on Johnson, which is your day job. <laughs> Thank you, Wilson. I appreciate the time. All right.